Welcome to ECN Trade Daily Video. Before we begin, it should be noted that any advice is of a general nature only and that your personal circumstances have not been taken into consideration. Hello everyone, my name is Rob Clayton and thank you for joining me. Well, it would seem now that we have a bullish bearish contest between the euro dollar and also for the US dollar index. The US dollar index, which measures the greenback strength against a basket of six major currencies, is weighted to the euro at 57.6. Firstly, if we have a look at the dollar index, you can see here that we've got an engulfed candle or bearish outside range day that now waits confirmation to reinstate a bearish case. Now, technically, we haven't broken down, but the candle does imply that we may see further weakness. A close under 92.50 could reinstate the downside towards the region of 91.50, 100 points. This, on the flip side, would see the euro. Now, if you're looking at the euro, we've got an engulfing candle that waits confirmation. We see a close above the level of 117.95, then this would reinstate the upside up towards 119.10.15. But like the dollar index, and also with the euro, is presently we're still holding to a pattern that is negative. So, although the candles are there, we've still got to keep an eye in case we get confirmation from the signals from the initial candle itself. But at the moment, the RSI on both and also the MACD doesn't support the case as of yet. Until then, we may see a small up test for the euro, but find resistance around 117.95. But just watch in case we get the break. The Australian dollar has also found a bit of momentum after trading for three days at the bottom side of the range around 73.15.25. The market is now rebounded, but likely to struggle here. It feels a bit like deja vu with the market recently testing six times at 74 cents and failed. But I do anticipate the seventh will do so. And therefore, look towards the bottom side of the range around 72.85, 95, where we may see, like previously, a bullish response. So still trading in this sideways broad band pattern, so to speak, and likely to see the uptest to foul. The dollar yen case took the challenge up towards 110.7080, got to intraday high of 110.79 and was rejected. From there, the market is actually anticipating possibly a further slide, but I would like to see a little bit more confirmation from the technical aspect. So it looks to me that most of the markets have challenged all the levels, but not or failing to confirm as of yet. So still keep in mind that long till we get a break of 110.05 that we may see a little bit of a knee-jerk reaction back to the top side, but also to foul. But what started this all is that overnight the market was waiting for the inflationary number. So traders got a good dose of decent economic news overnight, on Wednesday that is, when the US Labor Department said that the consumer price index, or the CPI, increased by 0.5% in July after rising 09 in June. Over the past 12 months though, July that is, the index increased by 5.4. The same increase as the period ending in June and the largest 12-month increase since 2008. So you can see why the market's a little bit jittery at the moment, especially with some of these Fed speakers this week. One with uh, Kansas City Federal Reserve President Esther George said that uh, the time has come to dial back the settings on the monetary policy, although she added that the tapering does not imply any following policy rate adjustments. So there's a bit of mixed messaging from all the uh, speakers so far, but they all seem to be singing the same tune about eventually tapering back. So therefore, the uh, view is that we could still see a stronger US dollar. And also, Sterling posted a bullish outside range day that waits confirmation. But if you notice one thing about the Sterling, the confirmation is a little bit closer than the others. It's at 138.90. And if we see a break above there, that would inject further momentum towards the region of 139.75.85 before turning around. But in the meantime, until we get the confirmation, still look towards that bottom side of the range, which is somewhere around 137.15.20. But the technicals are a little bit more persuasive in terms of supporting possibly a bullish case. And if the candle breaks at that level of 138.90, then we may see a further upstep. That would see sterling yen also take another 
step towards this level of 153.50, which I've been calling as a short term cap. And in the meantime, until we get any break of the sterling leg and with the slightly um, yen strength coming through, could still harbor a bearish camp at this level of 153.5 and, and eventually see a slide down to 152.40 to 151.60. Now, as I was mentioning before this week, that the four hour was looking a little bit more to the bullish case. However, as we hit that level of 1760 or near two, the market is for the last, um, at least if you count these four hour con uh, four hourly candles, you can see that we've got um, 24 hours or at least one day where well, the market hasn't really progressed any further and a little bit hesitant towards that 1760 level. Overall, though, we've got to wait to the end of the week because of that flash crash, flash crash, that is, the market still holds to a negative sentiment. But keep an eye on this candle as it's forming into a dragonfly doji. So a close in this pattern on Saturday may give a call for a further rise up to 1,800. But in the meanwhile, we've still got to clear this level of 1,760 to around 68. Because of this level being quite significant, and partly reason why we triggered this flash crash as we fell through it and there was little support until we got to the bottom side around 1,680-90 area, is that I uh, may find a rejection from 60 and maybe a down test back to 44 to 36, which is somewhere around this region here. Until then, the balls are still likely to navigate towards our top side, but see how responsive the bears are. And wrapping up with the oil, well, the market seems to have found a bit more or some momentum after extending its uh, rebound by the US policy. Hitting the wires was that um, the Biden administration said it would not call on US producers to increase crude output efforts to increase the OPEC production and was no longer a range, pl range plan. OPEC and its cartel, and also its allies, including Russia, agreed in July to boost output each month by 400,000 barrels per day. Over the month, that is, starting in August, until the rest uh, of their output cuts are phased out. Nevertheless, the market's found a little bit more of a step since this rebound from $64.7080. Unless we break above 70, 55, 60, where I've outlined here, then we could see the gains reversed and look back towards the bottom side of the range because we are still a bit weak here on the other side. So let's see how it plays out. Well, that wraps it for today. Thank you very much for joining me. And as always, look out for the intro report. And I hope you enjoy the rest of the day.